Hi everyone, welcome back to Grounded Haven Homestead. Today we're going to be going around the garden and harvesting some of our vegetables. Some of these things we're going to be eating fresh for the week, but I also am going to be doing some preserving and I thought it would be good to show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing to show you how we like to save our harvest for the winter months. The first thing I'm grabbing today is a few bunches of bok choy. So in the beginning of the video, I was harvesting a green variety and these are the purple lady bok choy from Baker Creek and these are so gorgeous and beautiful. I had never seen a purple bok choy before I saw these on Baker Creek's website and I was very excited about it. Fall is a great time for us to be growing leafy greens like this because in the spring they usually just bolt and I'm really happy with how they've done this year. Those dark purple leaves are so gorgeous against the bright green stems and I like to pick my heads at a little bit of a smaller size like they are here. We just had a nice rain the other night and I love harvesting things right after a good rain because everything is nice and fresh and crisp and also things are just a lot cleaner as well. Next we're at this little section of this raised bed where we have some lettuce greens and also some purple top turnips growing here. The turnips are starting to swell and form those bulbs and they're not quite ready to harvest yet. I want these to get nice and big, but today I'm going to be grabbing some of those greens. I don't think turnip greens are something that are very commonly eaten, but they are edible and very delicious. They are kind of like a radish green if you've had those, but I think that the texture is a little bit better because they're not as fuzzy or prickly as radish tops. And if you're already growing the turnips, then I feel like you might as well harvest some of the greens as well because it's just a little bonus harvest that you get to enjoy while those turnips are still forming. So to do this, I'm going to be grabbing a few leaves from each of these turnip plants. You don't want to grab all the leaves because then obviously the turnip is not going to have enough energy for it to keep on growing. But if you pull a few leaves from each plant and make sure to leave at least half of them on there, the turnip will be just fine. And I think this will actually benefit the turnips and all of these plants around here because it is getting a little bit crowded with all of this leafy growth. And I think thinning out some of this leaf canopy will really help for sunlight to get through to some of the other things I have growing here. From this small area of this bed, I was able to pick a nice bunch of turnip greens and they look really nice and healthy. Next, I'm going to move over to another bed where I have some collard greens growing and these are getting to a good size where I can start harvesting these as well. I wanna make sure that I start harvesting these because if I don't, they might start going to seed. The more you harvest these plants, the more leaves that they'll put out. So I wanna grab these even though they can actually get a lot bigger than this. I'm just harvesting the outer layers where the leaves are largest and leaving those smaller center ones and these will keep on growing. Collard greens are one of our favorite greens and they are very cold hardy so these will probably keep growing for quite a while into our fall and maybe even the winter. Next, I'm going to be grabbing some radishes. These are China Rose radishes, which are a winter radish that gets pretty large. And this one is a really nice size. This is probably the biggest radish we have grown yet, and I'm really happy with this. Love that beautiful bright pink color. And I have a couple more down the row. These two were growing kind of next to each other, so they are a little bit skinnier, but both also very good sizes. And with these, we're going to be making some pickled radishes. Here's our harvest from just this quick walk around the garden. We have our bok choy, which we're going to be eating fresh. We have collard greens and turnip greens, both of which we're going to be blanching and then freezing. And then we also have those couple of radishes that we're going to be pickling. So let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you how we're preserving all of this. 
First, I'm gonna start off with blanching some vegetables. I'm actually starting with some green beans. These were picked earlier this week and I wanted to get them preserved up because we won't have time to eat them this week. So I just have a pot of boiling water with a colander set in there. And I'm going to be doing this in small little batches so that the water temperature doesn't drop too much. And after blanching for 30 to 60 seconds, you'll know when the beans are done because they will turn a bright green color. I'm going to transfer these to an ice bath to let them instantly cool down and shock the vegetables. This blanching process is really important for certain vegetables in order for them to keep a good texture and flavor when you're freezing them. Not all vegetables need to be blanched, but I do definitely prefer green beans to be blanched. The greens that we're doing later, we're also going to be going through this process. But there are also vegetables where you don't need to do this. For example, zucchini, I don't normally blanch, and also okra, which I'm going to be showing you later in this video as well. I have done a lot of blanching sessions for green beans this year because we have done so well with them. And I think we probably already have like 15 quart bags of green beans in our freezer already. So we are going to be set this winter. After all the green beans have been blanched and have been sitting in the cold water for a little bit to cool down, I'm going to take them out and pat them dry on a towel. And sometimes I let them air dry for a little bit as well, just so that any of that surface moisture can evaporate. And then I'm going to lay this on top of a baking sheet and stick that in the freezer for a few hours until everything is frozen. Try to keep this in as much of a single layer as possible so that the green beans don't stick to each other. And that's all there is to it. Next, we're going to blanch our turnip greens and collard greens, and this is really easy because everything's already all set up. I actually just combined the both of these together because I didn't have a huge harvest of either of them. So instead of trying to separate them out, I figured I would just blend them together. These are going to be used mostly in soups, and I don't really mind if they are mixed in because they'll both be great for those kinds of recipes. And these you only need to dunk in the boiling water for like 10 to 15 seconds. Again, you'll know when they're ready because they will turn a really bright, vibrant green and then move these into the ice bath. This is the same pot of boiling water that I blanched the green beans in and the same ice bath. You'll notice that a lot of the ice has melted, but that's okay. The water is still pretty cool and you don't need everything to be completely ice cold. You just want to cool down the temperature enough so that it stops cooking. And the reason that I did the green beans before this is because I was already going to have my pot boiling and the ice bath set up for these greens. So I like to do multiple things at once. This isn't a hard process, but it does require a little bit of setup. And I would rather do two different vegetables at once while I have everything out. The greens will go really quickly. I only had about two bunches worth and they also shrink down quite a lot. But this is one thing that I'm always really happy to have on hand in our freezer because once these are all prepped and chopped up and frozen, it's so easy to throw these into any kind of recipe you're making very quickly. After these have been sitting in the water to cool down, I am going to take a good handful and just wring out all the water with my hands as best as I can. You really wanna squeeze as much of that water out as possible because if you have excess moisture, this is going to cause freezer burn when you go and put this in the freezer. Then I'm just going to take this little bundle of greens and give it a rough chop. You don't have to go too fine because these will break down pretty nicely once they're defrosted and thrown into something from frozen later on. And then I'm just gonna continue until I finish with the rest of the greens. Blanching and freezing is probably one of my favorite ways to preserve any smaller harvest that I get. While canning is really good for long-term storage and it's really nice because you don't have to use up freezer or refrigerator space, we don't always grow a huge amount of everything and certain vegetables require being pressure canned rather than water bath canned. It's also something that requires a lot of precision and sometimes you just need a quick and easy way to get some of this stuff preserved up so that you can get it out of your mind. I think this is a really important thing to learn how to do, especially if you have a small garden and you can't grow a lot of things. You can still preserve up small amounts of anything that you grow and it really does all add up if you just keep at it. 
Now my green beans have been sitting in the freezer for a few hours and I'm just gonna transfer these to some Ziploc bags. For now, we're just using some Ziploc bags to store all of our frozen food. Maybe next year we will upgrade to some sort of like vacuum sealed food saver or something like that. But for now, this works great for us. And with those couple of pounds of green beans that I blanched up today, I was able to fill a quart bag and also half of another one. And again, this might not seem like a lot, but I've been doing this maybe every two weeks all throughout the summer. And by now we have such a huge stockpile of green beans in the freezer that I'm really happy to have. Next, we're gonna move on to pickling our radishes. I'm starting off by making the brine. I have three quarters of a cup of sugar here, and then I'm going to be adding two cups of water and two cups of white vinegar. You can add more or less sugar as you like, and I also forgot to show it here, but I did also add about a tablespoon of salt. We're going to be pickling those China Rose radishes that we harvested today and I also have some red onions that I want to add along to this. Pickled red onions and radishes is probably one of my favorite pickles to have in the fridge. We use it a lot as like a topping for grain bowls or for tacos and I think it's such a versatile thing that you can go through so quickly. We're going to start by thinly slicing our radishes and I'm really happy to see how beautiful these radishes look on the inside. I find that when we grow smaller radishes, it's really hard to get them to not split or get pithy on the insides, but these are nice and smooth all the way through and so beautiful. Like I mentioned, I am also going to be adding some red onions to these. So I thinly sliced up two red onions. They're not homegrown onions since we didn't grow red onions this year, but next year we definitely want to. And I also smashed up a few cloves of garlic as well. I'm so obsessed with how beautiful these radishes are. Those slices would be so nice on some buttered toast or just thinly sliced with salt and pepper as a salad. I'm just gonna roughly mix these together in the bowl with the red onions, and then we're going to start putting these into some jars. I have a quart jar here, and I have the garlic cloves at the bottom of this, and I'm just gonna start layering in all of the vegetables in there, trying to get a good mix with the radishes and onions. And then we're going to pour that brine on top. By now, all of the sugar and salt is nice and dissolved. And I pour this on when it's still a little bit warm because I do like for the onions and the radishes to soften up just a little bit. I also had some other radishes in my fridge that I wanted to get pickled up. These are a Korean radish that are kind of similar to a daikon. And this is another thing that I also really love pickled to serve alongside anytime we have a stir fry with rice. This is a really easy quick pickle brine that you can use with any vegetable and you don't have to can this. Just put a lid on it and you can store it in your fridge for probably up to a month. It's a super easy way to preserve any small amounts of vegetables that you have. One thing I especially love about the red onions and radishes is that it turns such a beautiful color. You can kind of start to see that happening already with the reds and purples bleeding into the brine. By the next day, it's going to be a really gorgeous color. The next day I went back out to the garden because there were still some things that I wanted to get out of the garden and preserved up. The first thing is a few zucchinis and I'm so excited to say that we are finally having some success with zucchini. This is the best we've ever had our plants look without too much bug damage. I do think that we're going to lose these plants soon because I see some signs of vine borers in the stem, but for now the plants are still producing really well and I'm so happy about that. We also have some eggplants to harvest today. These long Asian eggplants have done so well for us this year. And I'm not going to preserve these today, we're just gonna eat them fresh for the week, but we are going to preserve up some of these zucchinis. And we got three of each of these from just a couple of plants. 
The main thing I want to get picked and preserved today is all of our Genovese basil. We're going to be making a pesto, which is of course just a classic dish that you can make using a lot of basil. I didn't have quite as much on the plants as I thought I would, so I will supplement this with a few other greens, which I'll mention later on. Since we're nearing the end of our gardening season, I'm going pretty hard with how far I am going on the stems when I pick these plants. This actually does help basil grow even more vigorously though, and I'm hoping that by doing this pick now, I will have enough time to get one last flush of basil before the growing season is over. I also had a couple of okra pods that were ready to pick. Not too many today, but I do have some other ones that I picked earlier this week. So I'll just add these in together and preserve them all at the same time. Here's what we ended up with today. I have a nice big bowl of basil and I also picked some tomatoes while I was in that row as well. We have a few zucchini, some eggplant, and some okra. Now we're back in the kitchen and we're going to deal with all of the stuff that we picked. First I'm just going to cut up the okra and this is all going to be frozen. Unlike the green beans and a lot of other vegetables, I don't blanch my okra. I don't find that it needs it. It cooks really well from frozen, at least for the things that we use it for. We mostly use this for gumbo and jambalaya and it usually cooks up really well from frozen. I've also dehydrated okra in the past and it does hydrate pretty well for those recipes as well. If you want to take up less freezer space. The next thing I did was to shred up a few of the zucchini to freeze. I did this in the food processor. Unfortunately, my camera wasn't recording when I did this, but it's pretty straightforward. If you have a food processor, I'm sure you know how to use the shredding disc. And it's a really quick way to shred up a lot of vegetables at once. This zucchini is going to be great for zucchini bread, or you can also just throw it into pasta or soups, anything you want to add a little bit of extra vegetables. I'm portioning out two cups of shredded zucchini for each of these bags so that it's easy to grab for just a single serving when I want to use it later on. Once I put these in the Ziploc bags, I try to flatten it out as much as possible so that this will store really nicely in the freezer. Since I have my food processor out, I can go ahead and whip up that pesto. I've toasted some pecans on a skillet and I've let those cool. And I also have eight to 10 cloves of garlic. Pesto is normally made with pine nuts, but a lot of times I use walnuts for my pesto because they're cheaper. I only had pecans on hand, so I use those, but you can really use any nut or seed that you have. It will work pretty well with whatever you use. Once I've pulsed those up into smaller bits, I'm gonna start adding my greens. About half of my mix is the Genovese basil, but like I mentioned earlier, I didn't quite have enough for the amount that I wanted to make because I wanted to do a really big batch so that I could freeze a bunch of this up. So I just went out into the garden and looked around and found a few things that I could just mix in there to cut the basil with. So I grabbed some arugula and also a few baby leaves of kale. There are so many different kinds of herbs and greens you can use to make pesto. You don't just have to use basil. I've made a lot of kale pesto in the past. You can make pesto with spinach. This year I made onion greens pesto for the first time and that was also really good. The arugula I'm using definitely has a stronger flavor so just be mindful of that. I tried not to add too much of that because it is quite peppery. But I actually think this pesto came out really delicious. It has a little bit more of a flavor kick to it than regular basil pesto would have. Sometimes I find that basil pesto is a little bit on the mild side and I really liked the addition of the arugula here. I also added in a cup of Parmesan cheese and then I added a tablespoon of lemon juice. I normally use fresh lemon juice, but I had bottled lemon juice in the fridge from all the canning that I've been doing, so I just used that. And then just start drizzling in olive oil while the food processor is running. 
For this amount, I ended up using about a half a cup of olive oil, but this is completely up to your preferences of what kind of consistency you like. I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration for ways to use different things in your garden to make a really delicious, easy pesto sauce. It's a great thing to have on hand to make some really quick meals come together later on in the year. After I checked my pesto for seasonings, it was all good and I'm going to divvy this up into small one cup containers to be frozen. And these are just really great little single serving size cups that I can just pull out of the freezer and whip up a meal with. This pesto tastes as good as it looks. I love that bright green color. Adding different greens to your pesto besides basil actually also helps give you that really vibrant color, so that's another bonus. Here's everything I ended up with after taking just a couple of hours over a few days to preserve all of this stuff. I have a quart and a half of green beans, a bag of frozen mixed greens. We also have two bags of shredded zucchini and half a bag of okra. Then we have three cups of pesto and we also have a quart jar of pickled vegetables. I hope this goes to show that you don't need a huge garden or a lot of one single thing in order to preserve some of your food from your garden. Every little bit adds up and soon enough you're going to have a freezer and fridge full of delicious healthy homegrown food. By the way, look at how beautiful these onions and radishes turned out. I love when they turn that gorgeous hot pink color and we already finished off that half pint jar that I filled as well because this stuff can go so fast. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed coming around our garden and harvesting some food. I hope that this inspires you to go out and get some of that stuff saved up before the season is over or just gave you some ideas of things to grow for next year. Thank you guys so much for watching, we really appreciate it, and we'll see you again in the next video.